My latest listing is part of a HOA community with really high fees. The home shows well, has top quality upgrades, and is the lowest price in the community. But I've gotten zero offers. What should I do? I'm gonna give you a couple takeaways that worked well with me in so many similar situations, okay? Number one, the house looks great. You said that, great. The price is right, right? It's one of the lowest priced homes. Problem though, the HOA, right? The Melarus, whatever it is, that's a problem. And so what I would tell you, because you're getting showings is, congratulations, you're getting showings. Your seller needs to know you're getting showings. And every time you get a showing without an offer, you need to deliver that news. And now I know it's hard because it's bad news. Guess what, we got a showing, by the way, seller, <laughs> They didn't write an offer. The reason why I tell you it's always in your mind good news to deliver the bad news is because as you deliver it, the, the, the perception is, becomes the reality, meaning, hey, let's talk about the reality. Let's talk about facts. I'm getting showings. I'm marketing your home. We're getting people to come in. It looks great. It's the lowest price. However, based on my feedback and based on all these showings and no offers, here is what I think we need to do, right? And so what I would tell you is you need to go in there with ammo. When I had a problem selling someone's house, I had a lot of tools in my toolbox. Number one tool, I'd look at the market on my snapshot on MLS and see what's the average days a house is listed to pending, right? So I'd go in the same area or even outside the area and I'd say from listing a home to pending, it's X amount of days. Do I, as a, a realtor, is my house that I'm listing fall within those days? Now, if it doesn't, that's ammo you pull out of your toolbox. Hey seller, let me just tell you, the average home right now is going pending within 15 days on the market. We're 25. So this tells me a couple things. Number one, we're priced too high. Now we are, I know we're the lowest priced home, but the Melarus and the HOA might be affecting, right, the purchasing power of the buyer. And so that is a tool. The second tool is I would actually get feedback from the, from the agents. If you're getting a showing and you're not getting an offer, you have an obligation. You, my friend, as the realtor, as the one making that big fat commission check, you have an obligation to work. And what I mean by that is to call the other agent and say, I wanna know why you didn't write an offer. I need real feedback. Truly, why did you not write an offer? Because that information, that data, that feedback to the seller is gonna help you when you need to go in for a price reduction. Now, just because you have the lowest price and you, you say you look the best, there's still a problem here, which is what you said was the HOA and the Melarus. How much more purchasing power is another buyer who doesn't have an HOA or Melarus going to get? So let me break that down. I would probably go to a lender and say, hey lender, the Melarus for this property is this much, the HOA for this property is this much, yearly, okay? What does that get for purchasing power for a buyer who's not looking in this area? And I'd use that data to provide, pull it out of your toolbox to the seller. Hey seller, just so you know, with how high the HOA Melarus is uh, over the span of a year or five years, because that's the average time people are moving, a, a buyer can literally take that and buy a home with 3,000 square feet more or 2,000 or 500 or whatever it may be or can get better upgrades. And so based on that information, we need to adjust our price. And all you're doing is delivering the news to the seller and you're allowing them to make the decision, right? At the end of the day, it's their decision, but you're doing yourself a due diligence when you're not providing this feedback to them. You and every other realtor has an obligation out there to provide this to the, their seller. That way when they're there, I need a price reduction. Because it's not you, right? You're, you have showings. You're getting people in. They're not writing an offer. And that's not your fault, that's the market. And that's not, you can't control the market. That's the market and you need to articulate that it's the market is telling us we're priced on the high side or we need to adjust the price or we need a price reduction. Because there's nothing else you can do. What are you gonna do? Remove the Melarus? Can't happen. Remove the HOA? Not gonna happen. Make the house look better? You already said it looks phenomenal and you're getting showings. There's nothing you can do other than lower the price, even though you are the lowest price. But my, my key to you today is go in with your tools from the toolbox, right? And pull them out and show them to the client and make sure you articulate that to the client so that they, wait, they can make a true valid decision, right? A decision on, I'm gonna lower the price and it makes sense for them. It's not some realtor saying, just lower the price and it makes you look unvaluable, uneducated and uneasy. I know that's a handful there, but I think it's really good content, very good value. Every realtor should think about that whenever they are taking a listing and whenever they're providing feedback to their clients.